Good afternoon, everyone. Um, once again, my name is Gels Garcia, and my presentation today is on CRP and New Start. So what is CRP? First of all, CRP is not to be confused with CPR. This presentation is on C-reactive protein. CPR is cardiopulmonary resuscitation. All the same letters, but two very different meanings, and they are not related to one another. So now that we got that out of the way, CRP, or C-reactive protein, is a strong independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease and a protein marker for inflammation in the bloodstream. It is synthesized in the liver, and when there is inflammation in the body, the liver will release more CRP as a way of protecting the tissues from infection, injury, or disease. So you may think that your family or friends are the first responders to when you get hurt, but really, your body is already working to respond. I especially found this to be interesting because CRP has prognostic value, or the likely course of a disease or ailment. Measured in milligrams per liter, CRP can indicate the relative risk for a future cardiovascular event. So less than one indicates a low risk, a value of one to three is average risk, and a value greater than three indicates a higher risk of cardiovascular disease, which is the number one leading cause of death worldwide. Thus, lowering CRP may reduce the risk for future cardiovascular event. And this has been shown and observed in many different studies. Um, so one involves diet. Um, diet is an important factor in preventing disease and decreasing inflammation. Uh, so in a 2016 meta-analysis, they found that consuming a healthy diet was found to significantly reduce CRP. In another study done, um, they found that moderate exercise, such as walking, can stimulate inflammation regulating cells. So in this study, even 20 minutes of walking consistently has been shown to decrease CRP, not only in adults with cardiovascular disease, but also in healthy adults as well. And the third is lifestyle. Lifestyle modification programs that involve both diet and exercise could be effective for improving patient inflammatory states and cardiovascular complications. So to sum up everything I just said, in case you started sleeping after that long sentence, increase in inflammation in the body leads to increased levels of CRP. And when this is elevated for prolonged periods of time, it can damage healthy tissues and increase the risk for cardiovascular disease. But lifestyle can help with that. Lifestyle intervention programs have been set up to help those at risk for chronic disease and high inflammation. Now I have a question for the audience. Who knows of a lifestyle program that incorporates natural principles to help improve health and manage chronic disease? Anyone can say, new star. You guys are so smart. Um, so Isabella already beat me to the question, but new star is an acronym that stands for nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God. These seven things are principles that the new star program in Weimar, California, utilizes to educate and instruct participants in regard to healthy lifestyle habits. The program offers a consistent schedule involving hydrotherapy sessions, daily exercise, a nutritious plant-based diet served at regularly scheduled meal times, spiritual counseling, as well as medical supervision. In New Start, patients will learn about simple lifestyle changes that can positively impact their health and their overall well-being. So based on all this information, the purpose of my study was to create a prospective experiment that will assess overall compliance with New START principles and the impact it has on overall blood tests, including CRP. So in other words, um, will adhering to New START principles more closely have an impact on a patient's CRP levels? The data collected involves CRP tests from patients at the start of the program and when they complete it and compliance is measured through surveys from patients who consent, as well as the new START staff. So on the screen, you will see the questions from the patient surveys. I'm not sure how much of it you can see. Um, but essentially, each question refers to one principle of new START by a self-assessed scale. 
In the end, these surveys will be used to find an average compliance score for each patient. Additionally, compliance scores will be given by New Start staff and physicians, and the two will be compared. So this study is currently still in progress, um, but from February of this year, I've been able to collect data and surveys from 19 New Start patients who have consented. And among the first set of data that has been collected, uh, the average compliance score was 8.29, with a standard deviation of 0.82. Um, and this is on a scale with 10 being the highest compliance. And the average change in CRP was negative 1.5, with a standard deviation of 1.75. For the initial findings, though the sample size is still small, it's only 19, um, and partial statistical analysis has not shown yet a significant correlation between compliance and CRP, uh, the current data collected from patients who completed the program has shown an overall decrease in CRP levels from baseline. And I plan to do more analysis with the data. My hope is to continue data collection in order to increase the sample size of the study through May 2023, and hopefully I can graduate. <laughs> and that is all. <laughs> Any questions? Any question? Do you know why your standard deviation is so high? For compliance or CRP? Yeah, so um, at the end of the program, there were some uh, patients that got sick, so that affected the CRP levels. Um, there was an inflammation process going on if they got sick, so their CRP was higher at baseline. So there were some that did have an increase, but for the most part, there was an overall decrease. Were the guests willing to participate? Were they happy to participate? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I gave them all um, a consent form so they could read through um, the study and consent if they would agree to be a part of the study. <laughs>